getting us some coffee. Had myself a mocha and talk about winter with you. Oh, let's get me in there a little better. How's that? Getting to be that time of year where people are starting to ask the winter questions. So, uh, thought what we do tonight is have our first preliminary talk about wintertime camping or people that don't have a winter as extreme as Minnesota. Um, how you can kind of, you know, get into winter camping and uh, a lot of you have gotten gear these past couple of years and, you know, getting down to the 40s and stuff, you feel pretty good. Now you want to get into some 20, maybe some, uh, you know, some teens, maybe even zero. So we're just going to talk about a couple of things. And I keep saying we, but it's looking around, it's just me here. I'm not an expert. It's just that I live in Minnesota. We have a long winter and I camp in it. Confidence is your number one thing. So if you're going to be in winter, you must first look like you belong in the winter. And they'll go, hey, Suge, uh, you know, I got this and this and I'm going to wear this and I'm going to put this inside of this. Will that keep me warm? You know, I don't really know. But I uh, can usually go, well, I don't think you'll die. You know, worst that'll happen is you're kind of shivering in the night. One trick is do not go to sleep cold. And try not to let yourself get cold all day long. That takes practice. That's layering clothes. You can see I just layered this down vest over this down jacket. This is an outdoor research down jacket that I got. I think it's the Transcendence jacket. I won it years ago. This is a Patagonia down vest that I got for Christmas one year. Drinking hot drinks, very important. Get hot stuff in you. Cut up a bunch of summer sausage and beef sticks and cook some bacon or sausage and just have yourself a bag of meat and eat on that all day. Doesn't even have to be warm. I've had so um, cut up beef sticks down to minus 40 and they might have had a little bite on them but they never totally froze. They had enough fat in them to keep them somewhat pliable. You know, you put it in your mouth, kind of suck on it like a mint for a while to temper it up. So when you start to get too cold, deal with it. If you start to get too hot or sweat when you're hiking out, the place you're going to hike, most people overdress, they start walking, you can feel that sweat start going, stop, take off your pack and take things off. Maybe you wear that down the first 10 minutes, but in a little while, take it off, keep it dry, put it in your pack, you might even want to be walking right at the edge of cold because it keeps you moving and uh, keep your pace up and keep yourself warm so that you're not too sweaty when you get to camp. And if you're like me, I tend to be kind of a sweaty guy. The clothes I hike in are not the clothes I hang around camp in for the most part. You know, now I'm getting a little bit older and I've learned winter camping that it's not about hiking so many miles out. You know, go out two, five, seven, less make a base camp and especially if you've never winter camped before you know be at a place where you could bail to your car and you've got all kind of warm things from home that you wouldn't backpack with but usually when i get to camp if i'm damp and wet in winter camping i might just make the choice that the first thing i'm going to do is slip into my dry dedicated camp clothes so think about that something to consider if you're a sweaty person and you know, especially if those long johns are wet on your buttocks and that buttock starts quivering and you're just cold because you're sweaty, deal with that right away. Now, depending on the temperature, sometimes camp chores will keep you warm for a while. So that's just something to consider. It's up to you. Don't let yourself start shivering. Build a fire, drink a hot drink, do some jumping jacks, good for you. Now I'm gonna keep coming back to the hot drink. I'm having some cocoa and coffee right now, a little espresso and cocoa. Cocoa's great. It's got a lot of fat in it. It warms you up. That stuff called Russian tea, that super sweet stuff, man, that's really good. Any kind of tea, just hot water, coffee, drink some hot drinks in the day. They warm you up from the inside out. All right, it feels good. You want to stay hydrated in the winter, and why just drink cold stuff because it's just getting you cold inside. So talking about liquids, you got to think about your water source. Do you live in an area where the creeks and the rivers are going to be frozen? Will there be snow for you to gather snow to melt? That's the case here in Minnesota. This time of year I could get up camping up north and I hope to go soon. And it might not have much snow and all the water sources are frozen. So that can get tricky. So if you're somebody that uses a filter, maybe you're down south and you're just camping in 22 degree weather, you're going to have to sleep with that filter. At some point you're going to have to thaw that filter out. It's going to freeze up if you hang that water up out, outside all night. 
here in Minnesota. I sleep with my water. Uh, um, I have it inside the hammock with me. Sometimes it's just so cold that even burying it in the snow, I've had it freeze or it's all just ice in the morning, slushy ice. And I want that water so I can have myself a, a, a espresso from the hammock. I want my medallia d'oro while I'm laying there. I may not cook my breakfast, but I'm gonna have my, my hot drink from the hammock using my alcohol stove. And I only use my alcohol stove in winter camping, deep, serious winter, when, when I'm dependent on snow for water, only for my coffee in the morning. The rest of the time I'm using my MSR Whisper Light white gas stove. A lot of people think I use the alcohol stove the whole time. They just don't have the heat to melt that much snow. And you'd really have to bring a lot of denatured alcohol or heat or grain alcohol or whatever it is you use. So I use the white gas stove, but I do just use my fancy feast stove in the morning. Um, that just to have my medallia d'oro and maybe a pap tap from the hammock. So that's just a little morning treat for me. I was panting away. Looks like it's minus 33. I've been just sucking in cold and air all night, back and forth, really warming up. And the old fancy feast, totally working. Oh, the glory of hot coffee in the snowy, snowy woods. Gets to doing a fella some good. Now, one thing about winter camping is, you know, your weight of your pack will increase a little bit, but mainly it's the bulk. You got thicker jackets, you got thicker sleeping bags or top quilts or under quilts. You just have more stuff. You have thicker socks, you have more clothes. Uh, so everything just expands a little bit. So find out if your pack will hold your gear. You know, you might be strapping things to the outside. You might have to get a bigger pack for winter camping, but that's something to consider too. Will it hold it? Now, up here in Minnesota, I like to pull a pulk, and a pulk is a sled, and they're easy to make. Uh, I'm gonna put a link to a lot of my winter videos in the description box below this video. So I'm real old, I haven't updated them, because I haven't really changed what I do. I pretty much do the same thing. Let's talk about our feet because winter camping, usually your feet are the first thing to go if you've never gone winter camping. People get cold feet and if your feet are cold, that's hiking, standing around or sleeping. It ruins the trip for you. Thus ruining the trip for me because I got to watch you be miserable going, oh, do I have to stick their feet in my armpit like those mountain climbing movies? <laughs> So usually hiking out, your hiking boots probably be fine. Put a good pair of socks in, not too tight, and when you get to camp, your socks will be damp. Switch out right away, all right? And if you have to wear those boots or some Crocs or whatever you have, if you have snow, if you have wet snow, it gets a little tricky. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things here. Pretty proven, as a matter of fact, right now I'm gonna show you. I'm wearing, um, right now I'm wearing this is a muckluck, which is good down to, boy, you know, these are serious winter boots. Here, I'm wearing a motorcycle rain over boot with a synthetic down booty inside, all right? This is what I'd recommend for wet snow. Mucklucks aren't really made for wet snow. They're meant for dry snow. Today, we're right on the edge, you know, but I'm at home, so it's fine. These are synthetic booties right here. I got them at REI years ago. They're not that expensive. 30 bucks or so, maybe a little more, might even be less. Those inside these motorcycle rainproof sort of riding boots, one inside the other. Get these real large so they'll go over your booty with a pair of, I like saying booty, I said it a lot, with a pair of wool socks inside are gonna do you real good. That's a, it's a pretty good, it's, it works like a muckluck without being a muckluck. Now I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina, Shelby, North Carolina, Ennery, South Carolina and it would snow once in a while. And one thing we'd always do, mom would give us bread bags to put over our feet. So if none of this other stuff works, hiking out or if your feet are cold, put the bread bag, this is just a little grocery sack, over your bare foot with your sock on, over that. Or put one thin sock on first, then this, then a pair of socks on over that. 
and particularly when you get to camp and your boots are kind of wet and damp and let's say you've put those dry insoles in but your boots are just yeah it's just wet wet winter bring yourself when you pack your pack some gallon baggies and several of these because really a vapor barrier like this it holds that heat in your foot will be inside that inside your boot with a sock over it and I tell you what it it works and that's going to just make your feet a lot better so it's just your old classic uh, you know backwoods vapor barrier old bread bag or a grocery sack over your feet with a sock over it if you're on the edge with your footwear at camp bring yourself a little extra piece of foam that's just a part of a an old uh, thermarest foam pad and stand on it just stand on that when you're standing around camp talking to friends that will help insulate your feet from the cold below so if you can and this is important go in your backyard the the patio of your apartment if you can go to a local park or a state park or a friend's house that'll let you camp or hang your hammock in their backyard if you don't have a place try a night out in the cold with your sleep system and I would recommend putting on what you're gonna wear for the day around camp and go there and sit outside for four or five hours don't go inside practice with your stove make sure your stove works make sure you can boil that water make sure everything's good to go on that go out there with confidence if you're confident in your winter camping you're gonna have a lot more fun and you'll be able to handle you know situations as they come up that was a mouthful